Welcome to Electra Online. Now let's talk about the six basic trigonometric functions. Even though we typically only use the first three, we should be aware of the existence of all six. Now, just to let you know again, the basic definition for a typical right triangle is that we have a hypotenuse, which is along the side, then we have the opposite side and the adjacent side to the angle. And the reason why we call this the opposite side because it's opposite of the angle, it doesn't touch the angle. And here we call this the adjacent side because it touches the angle. So that's why we call it the opposite side and adjacent side. And we have the symbolism defined here. And the numbers we're going to use here as examples are based on the, on the indication here that the angle is supposed to be 30 degrees in this particular triangle right there. All right, so the six functions are the sine, the cosine, the tangent, the cotangent, the secant, and the cosecant. And the sine and the cosine are defined as we saw before. The sine is defined as the, op the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. So however long this side is divided by the length of the hypotenuse, that ratio is defined as a sine of theta. And if the angle is 30 degrees, then the opposite side will be one half in length. The hypotenuse is going to be equal to one by definition. Let the hypotenuse equals one. And so that ratio gives us one half. That means that the sine of 30 degrees is equal to one half. How do we know that? Well, people have calculated these, all these various values for all the various different angles and put those in a table. And of course, today with the calculators, we just punch it in and it gives us the value. So you punch in 30 degrees, take the sine of that, and you get 0.5. For the cosine, the definition is the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. You can see the adjacent side is longer, but not quite as long as the hypotenuse, so the ratio of that will be slightly less than 1. In this case, the adjacent side will be equal to the square root of 3 over 2, the hypotenuse is equal to 1, so therefore the ratio will be the square root of 3 over 2. And if you work that out in a calculator, that's approximately equal to 0.866, so you can see that ratio is a little bit less than 1. All right. What about the tangent of the angle theta? Well, the tangent, by definition, is the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side. So it's that ratio right there. And so by definition, if you take the opposite side over the adjacent side, that's the same as saying the sine over the cosine. So the tangent can be defined like this, or it can be defined by the ratio of the sine divided by the cosine. The result is exactly the same regardless of the value of the angle. In this case, when the angle is 30 degrees, we can see that the sine of theta is 1 half, the cosine of theta is the square root of 3 over 2, so when we simplify that, we get 1 divided by the square root of 3, and so the tangent of 30 degrees is equal to 1 over the square root of 3. The cotangent of theta is defined as the inverse of that, is the ratio of the adjacent side divided by the opposite side, so the length of the adjacent side divided by the length of the opposite side, and it's the same thing as saying it's the ratio of the cosine divided by the sine. So both of those definitions are perfectly fine. We remember that the cosine of theta when theta is 30 degrees is equal to the square root of 3 over 2, and the sine of theta is equal to 1 half, so that ratio ends up being the square root of the 3. So for the cotangent of 30 degrees, it's equal to the square root of 3, which is 1.732, so that's bigger than 1. And the tangent and the cotangent can be bigger than 1, the sine and the cosine cannot be bigger than 1. Also keep in mind that there's a, ratio, that there's a relationship between the cotangent and the tangent that one is the inverse of the other. So the cotangent of theta is 1 over the tangent of theta, and the tangent of theta is equal to 1 over the cotangent of theta. So we have that relationship between those two. Finally, the last two trigonometric functions is the secant and the cosecant. The secant is defined as the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent side. So the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent side, so you can see that this will always be bigger than 1. In essence, it's the inverse of the cosine, because the cosine is defined as the adjacent of the hypotenuse, so the hypotenuse over the adjacent is the same as the inverse of the cosine, so you can use either one of these definitions. In the case that the angle is 30 degrees, we can see that's 1 over the square root of 3 over 2, or 2 divided by the square root of 3, which, by the way, is bigger than 1. And if you take the cosecant of that, the definition is a hypotenuse divided by the opposite side, which is essentially the inverse of the sine. So again, you can define it either way. For an angle of 30 degrees, you can see that hypotenuse is 1, the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half, so that's equal to 2. 
Notice that the secant and the cosecant will always be bigger than one. Uh, the value, the absolute value of that, because of course when we deal with other angles that goes all the way around, we could have negative values, but the, the absolute value of those will always be bigger than one. And then you can see that there's a relationship between the cosecant and the secant. The cosecant is one over the, of the secant, so one is the inverse of the other. You can also say that the secant is equal to one over the cosecant. So again, those are the relationships between those two. Now, it's not a bad idea to memorize most of what's on this table, especially when you deal with the first two or three columns here. Notice we have the angles of zero degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees, and we have the six trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. So you can see for zero degrees, the sine is of that angle is zero. For 30 degrees, it's one half. For 45, it's square root of two over two. For 60 degrees, it's square root of three over two. And for nine degrees, the sine of theta is equal to one. You can see that the cosine will be everything in reverse, at 0 degrees, the cosine is 1. At 30 degrees, the cosine is squared to 3 over 2. At 45 degrees, the squared to 2 over 2, and so forth. You can see that the tangent being the sine over the cosine, it's 0 divided by 1 is 0. 1 half divided by this is 1 over the square root of 3, and so forth. So you can see the various values of the tangent. Notice that the tangent is not defined at 90 degrees, because then you divide the sine by the cosine. The cosine is 0, so when you divide by 0, you get infinity or undefined. For the cotangent, is everything around. Remember, the cotangent is the inverse of the tangent, so you get infinity, square root of 3, 1, 1 over square root of 3, and 0. And then you have the secant and the cosecant, which is essentially the inverse of the sine, uh, uh, sorry, the inverse of the cosine, so you get 1 over 1 is 1, 1 over this is 2 over the square root of 3, so essentially these numbers in reverse. And then, of course, when you divide by 0, you get infinity, and on the cosecant is this row, but completely turned around in the other direction. So, you really only need to remember these two, and then you can easily derive the other four columns. And actually, you only need to remember the one column, because then you know the second column is simply not in reverse. So if you remember this column, you can figure out everything else in this table, and so that's why you don't have to remember all that, but at least know how to derive those numbers for those particular values. Extremely useful to do so. Obviously, there's going to be angles that are other than that, and you need your calculator for that. But these are very common values that you should know the immediate uh, sine and cosines for, like this on the table. So, those are the six basic ones, and those are the ones we're going to be using. But we're going to concentrate, of course, on the first three.